If you're into photography or creating video content, chances are at some point you've probably asked yourself, how do you get those beautiful, perfectly symmetrical shots where the camera is mounted directly overhead, it's looking straight down over a subject, whether it's flat lay photography, maybe some type of food photography, or maybe it's a video where you're doing a product unboxing or demonstration. How is it done? How are other people doing it? Well, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate for you uh, the variety of ways that it can be done. And I'm also going to share with you different options for different budgets. So if this is something you just want to spend a little bit of money on, it's not something you're going to be doing all the time, up to more expensive, more professional ways of doing it. And I'm going to cover everything from how to do it using the phone in your pocket to a you know small mirrorless camera like this to a bulky, heavy, professional, full frame DSLR like this one. My name is Todd Domini. I make videos here on YouTube about photography. Okay, let's begin with one of the cheapest and simplest ways to do this, and that is to use a microphone stand. A mic stand is obviously designed for microphones. It's not designed for cameras and all that. So the thread out here at the end of the arm uh, isn't compatible for our needs. Fortunately, there is um, some adapters which are made by a company called Camvate. And in one pack, you get both a quarter inch adapter and you get a three eighths of an inch adapter. So to mount a phone to this, you can just use a, you know, a cheap uh, phone cradle like this one. This one happens to have a quarter inch thread in the bottom. I just attach the Camvate adapter to the bottom of it. And then you screw this onto the end of the mic stand. Now it's simply a matter of getting the camera into the proper position over our subject, over the table. All you have to do is just extend this boom arm out. You can also loosen this up here and then raise and lower the mic stand. And additionally, you have this third point of control here, which is a tilt uh, control. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it is possible to also use a ball head for this. I have the uh, 3 8 of an inch Camvate adapter uh, on the end of the microphone stand here. And now there we go. Now, if you go with a microphone stand, a word of caution, just remember that a mic stand is designed for microphones. It is not designed for heavy pieces of camera gear attached to the end of its boom arm. So with that in mind, do not attempt to attach something like a full frame uh, mirrorless or DSLR camera with a, with a big heavy lens like this onto the end of it. The whole thing is going to topple over. It's going to be a recipe for disaster. The most that I would recommend attaching onto the end of a mic stand would be a small mirrorless camera like this with a small lightweight uh, lens attached. And no matter what you attach to the end of the microphone stand, make sure that you have something over the legs on the bottom of the mic stand. Put a sandbag down there, a bag of rice, so that when this is boomed out and you extend this arm out over your subject, the whole thing doesn't topple over. Next option is to use a tripod. Now, not just any tripod, but a tripod which has a 90 degree center column. This tripod is made by K and F Concept. And up here at the top of the center column, you'll see that there is this opening here. There's a notch that is cut into the housing of the, of the column. The way this works is you just raise the center column, just like you would on any other tripod. When the center column hits the top, uh, stop point and you can feel it when you pull it up. You then have the option of moving the center column down. Now the column is, it's, you know, it claims to be 90 degrees, but I think it, it may slope just a little more downward than that. So it's not perfectly flat, but that's not a big deal because once you attach a camera down here to the end on its uh, integrated Arca Swiss ball head, then you just loosen up the ball head. You can reposition the camera move it around and then just get the camera perfectly flat and in the right position, lock it down, and then you're ready to start shooting. If you need for the camera to be higher, uh, further away from your subject, you just raise the legs on the tripod. If you need it to be further in or out from the table, you just pick up the tripod and move it back and forth. What I really like about the tripod option is the fact that it's a tripod. In addition to doing, you know, flat lay overhead, you know, type of work, you could use the tripod for all the other things that a tripod is useful for. Next option, Glide Gear. Now, I don't have any personal experience using Glide Gear, but I came across their products while doing research for this video. The two products that Glide Gear sells are the Glide Gear OH75 and the OH100. 
The OH-75 is the cheaper of the two. It includes three pieces of hardware, including two brackets, which are attached to the top of light stands. You then run a center pole or column between those brackets. And then on that pole, you attach the camera mount. So who would benefit most from the Glide Gear system? Well, I think one audience would definitely be people who have full frame, heavy DSLRs or mirrorless cameras with large, bulky, heavy pieces of glass like this attached because then the camera is safely mounted and secured and you don't run as much of a risk of the camera toppling over. The other thing that Glide Gear would be helpful for would be anyone who wants to do large flat lay shots, you know, like maybe over a floor or a large table and they need to get the camera high off of uh, off of the ground. This also opens the op opportunity to use a more standard focal length as well, something like 35 millimeters or 50 millimeters, something which is not going to create that distortion that you would see if you were shooting using a wide angle lens with the camera down close to the table. Next option, build your own glide gear. Now, I couldn't resist the urge. When I looked at the Glide Gear OH-75, I kept thinking, there's gotta be a way to make something like this using the equipment that I already have. And sure enough, it's actually not that hard to do. What you're going to need are a pair of light stands. If you already have those, then you're halfway there. Then you're going to need um, three of these small rig super clamps, a lightweight ball head, one that has a notch cut into the side of it here so that the, uh, so that the plate can uh, lay flat on the side of the ball head. Then you're going to need a 3 8 of an inch to a 3 8 of an inch adapter. I'm gonna explain how all this works in just a minute. And then you're going to need something for your center rod. Now for me, I'm just gonna use this old uh, Bed Bath & Beyond shower curtain that I think I bought like 20 years ago. You just simply attach the super clamps to the top of each light stand. Then you attach the shower curtain rod or whatever rod you have between the clamps you tighten down the clamps, make sure that they're good and secure. And then in the center of the rod, that's where you attach the third super clamp. So then you just put the 3 8 of an inch adapter down there in the bottom of the small rig. And then you get your ball head, then you attach the ball head onto that. And now with this clamped onto the rod, you can attach your camera onto the side of the ball head and the camera's looking straight down. So if you go with this option, just please remember to fully tighten down that clamp on that center column because you're going to be putting some weight on it and the last thing you'd want is for your camera to drop. Next option is to use a C stand. Now, if I were to make a bet, you know, as to what it is that, you know, high-end professional photographers do who do like food photography for magazines and all that, what is it that they're using? Chances are they're probably using C stands. Fortunately, there are some budget-friendly C-stands which are made by Neewer. Now, these are actually the C-stands that I use. I'm using two of them right now. I think they're fantastic. Now, I'm sure some people will say that these are not quite as nice as more high-end professional C-stands. And for that matter, I don't even think Neewer calls these C-stands. Like last time I looked, it's not even in the title or description. Perhaps it's some kind of copyright trademark thing. I don't know. Um, but I mean, they're C-stands. So what you get when you buy a C stand is a grip head. So a grip head uh, attaches to that long horizontal arm which comes off the center column of the C stand. And then on the other side, you have this um, kind of like rotating piece here with all these different diameters for you to insert a light or whatever it is that you're trying to attach to the stand. So what we're going to be attaching is what's called a spigot. Um, this does not come with the C-Stand. This is an additional accessory that you have to buy, but it's really not that expensive. So once we have the spigot inside of the grip head here, then it's simply a matter of attaching the ball head to the other side of the spigot. Then you mount your camera onto the ball head, and now you have a setup that is perfect for overhead shots. You can then just loosen up this side of the grip head here and slide it back and forth on the rail. And then if you need to, you can loosen up the ball head here too and reposition the camera, move it around in order to get it into just the right position so it is looking straight down. One tip I'll give you regarding the use of spigots is to avoid the temptation of just running the quarter inch side of the spigot directly into the base of the camera. It places way too much pressure on that, on that tiny little quarter inch area on the base of the camera and you could easily end up bending the uh, bending that mount on the bottom of the camera. And that's totally not what you want to be doing. So who are C stands for? Well, I think anyone who has invested considerable money in their camera bodies and their lenses, I mean, because you could be talking about thousands of dollars here that is 
you know, suspended off the ground, unattended by itself, you know, looking straight down. It's a rather precarious place to be. And you want to make sure that you're protecting your investment. You want to make sure that it's secure and that it's not going to fall over. Next option is to use a ceiling mount. Now, these mounts are designed for security cameras and projectors, but there's nothing stopping you from using them for photography as well. There's nothing on your floor. There's no seat stands. There's no light stands, nothing for you to move around or trip over. It's always on the ceiling above you. And I think the people who would benefit most from this are people who have a particular area that they're always going to be doing flat lay photography and or filmmaking. It's always going to be over one spot and they don't want to mess around with all these other pieces of gear. Obviously you lose some flexibility because you can't be moving the camera around. You're going to have to move everything around the camera. However, if you always plan on doing the exact same thing in the exact same place, the ceiling mount approach might be perfect for you. Quick tip, when doing any kind of overhead photography or video work, make sure that you have some kind of plan for how you intend to remotely trigger the shutter on the camera, which is important because oftentimes the camera can be high off the ground. It could be hard to see. It could be hard to reach. And even if you can reach it, I have found that when I have a camera mounted on a C stand and if I physically press the shutter on the back of the camera, it can cause bounce. It could cause vibration in the C stand. And then sometimes it can take up to a minute or longer for that vibration to finally go away and for you to for it to finally be still again so you can start shooting. So you have some different options for how to do this. One option is to go old school and just get a wired uh, trigger like this that plugs into your camera. Or you can go wireless and use the mobile app which works with whatever camera it is that you're using. And then you can preview the image and uh, fire the shutter on the camera that way. Or if you want to get really fancy with it, a wireless HDMI transmitter like this one from Benbox. Then the HDMI video signal from the camera goes to the wireless transmitter. And then from there, you can then uh, see the image and you can remotely trigger the shutter using your phone, you can use a tablet, and you can actually use it on a desktop as well. So Benbox did recently send me this wireless transmitter and the timing was perfect because I was able to use it for this video. I was able to stream a video from the camera over to the iMac, preview it over there, make sure everything was lined up and then start and stop recording. So uh, I don't have a final verdict on it yet, but I've been uh, pretty impressed with how it works so far. So I've covered a variety of ways of doing this at different price points, but I'm sure there are more ways of doing it that I haven't even thought of. So if you happen to be someone who has done this yourself, perhaps you've come up with your own clever solution for it. What do you recommend? What is it that you're using to do your overhead photography and video work? If you have time and you'd like to share, please feel free to leave a comment below. Everything that I talked about in this video today is linked below in the description. Those links are affiliate links in full disclosure. So I will receive a small, uh, referral fee for anything which is purchased using one of those links, but it doesn't cost you anything more. It just helps support me and the content that I'm creating for this channel. If you enjoyed the video and you learned something from it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, if you'd like to keep in touch in the future, and if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future, please remember to hit the subscribe button as well. I appreciate your time and attention as always. Be safe, be well, and I will see you next time.